look uh when we talk about the transportation in the plant so uh in the terms of distance means the distance for which a substance need to be transported we divide them into two categories short distance transport and long distance transport when we talk about this short distance transport of substances so basically there are two substances which need to be transported transported right the substances which need to be transported there are only just two two substances right uh substances need to be transported need to be transported so basically the first and more most important part that is the water along with the water mineral remains dissolved with it and minerals are transported along with the water right the second thing which need which 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 need to be transported that is the organic food organic substance organic substance this that is basically food right food need to be transported from one point to another there are some other substances as well which need to be transported but they are need to be transported uh, for longer distance right so shorter distance right so these are substances need to be transported for long distance these are basically two things which need to cover the long distance but there are certain substances substances need to be transported for short distance what are those plant hormone some minerals some metabolite some metabolite what are those metabolite like gum resin right these need to be transported for short distance so the substance there are two kind of the substance first which we need to transport it for the long distance second those need to be transported for the short distance in this chapter we will talk more and more about the substances which need to be transported for the long distance right so the transportation can be of two types short distance transport and the long distance transport how does this short distance transport takes place so means how the minerals are transported from one cell to another cell how the uh, some metabolites are transported from one cell to another cell so basically this these these are the two cells i have just so short distance transport can be done by the two process diffusion and osmosis both of the process we will study in detail when i talk about the diffusion that uh, transfer of or passes of uh, molecules from its higher concentration to lower concentration is called diffusion process we know it's a very simple definition of diffusion the outer layer or outer covering that is of cell wall then there is a plasma membrane between two these two cells there are some pores or some interconnection which connect there are some pores which connect the protoplasm of two cells so these pores are called plasmodesmata plasmodesmata interconnect the protoplasm of two cells the largest part which is a uh, largest organelle which is found in the plant that is vacuole and this small part is called nucleus so wo vacuole enlarges in the size right this is nucleus vacuole enlarges in the size it push the uh, protoplasm and nucleus in the peripheral region. that's why the protoplasm and nucleus is the peripheral in plant cell and this is the vacuole the vacuole the largest vacuole is called central vacuole so basically transport of substance like water ions metabolite takes place in through the from one vacuole to another vacuole try to understand the transport of substances from one cell to another cell do not take place from protoplasm to protoplasm basically transport of substance from one cell to another plant cell takes place through the central vacuole why 
because the water metabolite minerals they all remains stored inside the vacuole part and vacuole is the largest organelle so from one cell to another cell transport of water ions food and metabolite metabolite takes place through the plasmodes parta by the pro, either by the process of diffusion or by the process of osmosis is that clear furkan keep on telling me and if you have doubt keep on asking feel free to ask plasma dispatcher connect uh, connect it's uh, with the vacuole okay plasma dispatcher do not directly connect to the vacuole right plasma dispatcher connect to the um, uh, protoplasm right uh, the substance have to pass through the protoplasm but basically they are not coming from the protoplasm they have to pass uh in this chapter uh, you must have studied about the symplast and apoplastic transport right uh, both kind of the transport takes place through the plasmodes parta but when transfer of substance takes place from one vacuole to another vacuole it have to pass the protoplast but it is not transported from the protoplast is that clear okay fine and uh, now uh, when we study the apoplastic and symplastic pathway it will become more clear but the storage of substance because you know you will get the question like this one the storage of anthocyanin takes place so basically anthocyanin is a type of pigment and there are some metabolites they are stored in the uh, vacuole only so most of the substance which need to be transported they remains stored in the including water they remains stored in the vacuole fine so basically what are those basic substances which remains stored in the vacuole uh, anthocyanin pigment which give color metabolite they may be primary or secondary metabolite third mineral fourth water right so these are the basic substances which remains stored in the vacuole now uh, let's talk about the long distance when we talk about the long distance transport the long distance transport takes place uh, for two substances first i talk about the uh, water and mineral right so water and mineral both are absorbed by the root hair then they reaches to the root from root they are absorbed and they are transported to the top part of the plant till the top part of the plant means till the top leaf and apex part with the help of xylem alone right so xylem is a type of complex tissue right xylem transport water and mineral from root to the leaf and uh, with the help of xylem element xylem is a complex tissue so basically complex tissues are those tissues which are made up of more than one cells so xylem are made up of four kind of tissue tracheid vessels xylem parenchyma and xylem fiber right and now there is a theory now i try to understand now there is a theory which theory explain now transportation is taking place that we know that transportation of mineral and water is taking place through the uh, uh, xylem but how it is taking place there is a sequoia plant that is 111 meter long so how that much distance is traveled by the water what is the mechanism behind it so this mechanism this concept this functioning part have been explained by a theory and that is called transpiration pull theory transpiration pull theory uh, pull theory in this chapter that explain how the water and the minerals are being transported from one place to another place through the xylem right the second thing which we talk about that is the food food is formed in the leaves but root have done their job root have given leaves water root have given leaves mineral now they required food why because they cannot synthesize the food they they are not green so in return they want the food or organic substance that is transported honestly by the leaves in return to the uh, this mineral and water so food formation takes place in the leaves in the form of glucose that need to be understand 
glucose is a monomer basically right it is monosaccharide right we'll discuss what is the monosaccharide or disaccharide uh, so basically the simplest sugar which is formed in the form of the food that is glucose but transportation do not take place uh, trans uh, glucose is not transported from one one part to another glucose is converted into a disaccharide substance called sucrose right and trans food is transported in the form of sucrose right it is transported with the help of a pipeline i have represented with the help of red color that is called a uh, phloem right phloem is meant for transportation of organic substances and food right phloem is also a complex tissue right phloem is also a complex tissue it means phloem is also made up of more than one type of the cell phloem is made up of tube cell companion cell colon pramen parenchyma and phloem fiber now again the question comes it is true that transportation of food and organic substances from leaf to the root is taking place with the help of a tissue that is called phloem but how it is taking place what is the mechanism behind it that mechanism have been explained by the mass flow theory or cell and sink theory that was the outer line for the transport long distance bus tell me is that clear okay okay uh transport of uh, organic food right transport of organic food and organic substances they takes place through the phloem how does they they are uh, the mechanism like what is the process behind transportation of food and organic substances that is explained by a theory that is called mass flow theory or cell and sink theory i have written over here mass flow or cell and sink so mass flow and cell and sink theory explain how the organic substances are transported from leaf to the root and transpiration pull theory explain how the water and minerals are transported from the uh, root to the leaf to the xylem is that clear fine uh, so this was just outline of this chapter and i want to tell you that why we study the transpiration pull theory what is the logic behind it why we study the mass flow theory right why we study the osmosis and all come to the means of transport right so means of transport there are basically two means of transport active transport and passive transport right first we divide the transport into two categories active and passive transport active transport is that transport where energy is required right we need to spend some energy for the transportation of substance passive process is that process in which we need not to spend the energy so normally on the side i have explained over here what is the diffusion so in general what is the diffusion diffusion is a process in which movement of molecule takes place from higher concentration to low concentration this is a natural process it is always seen that when we open a deodorant bottle the smell or fragrance are uh, spread across the room and why because the molecules or perfume are moving from the higher concentration to lower concentration I means simply we say that diffusion is taking place from the bottle of the perfume to the outer world so when diffusion is taking place from high concentration to low concentration energy is not required right and we call this downhill movement right and we can say that diffusion of molecule taking place in the direction of concentration gradient what does it mean by concentration gradient from high concentration to low concentration so when any substance or any molecule is diffusing out from higher concentration to lower concentration we call that diffusion is taking place in the direction of concentration gradient that is a natural direction and here the energy is not spent but when this process become reversed right we have to 
diffuse molecule from low concentration to high concentration means against the natural phenomena right this is called uphill movement and this is called the movement of molecule against the concentration gradient and when you have to why we are calling uphill when you have to uh, like go uphill upside of hill you have to spend lots of energy if you are coming down to the hill you need not to spend the energy right so again when the molecule move uphill means against the concentration gradient against the natural direction right they have to spend the energy right so that is the diffusion can be of two type uphill or down right now come to the active and passive active transport always takes place in uphill direction when molecule try to move against the concentration gradient means they are moving from low concentration to high concentration at that point of time it have to spend the energy and that is called active transport what is the example transport of mineral you know most of the mineral have higher concentration in soil sorry most of the mineral have higher concentration in root but low concentration in soil but still root require more and more these mineral then the mineral are transported from the uh, uh, soil to the root by the active process and their plant have to spend the energy passive diffusion so the or the passive transport in passive transport it is always downhill means it is always takes place in the direction of diffusion gradient that is from high concentration to low concentration energy is not required over here right so is that clear active and passive transport for fun downhill and uphill all concept and one more thing is it legible to you because uh, they will give you okay they will give you the link of this ppt you can read it again after the class so uh, I, i i want you not to note down too much thing just have your notebook and when i say that you need to when i dictate or say that you need to note it down then you have to note down otherwise you will get the link of this ppt and you can go through with it again after the class right now come to the passive transport passive transport Mm, takes place uh, through two means diffusion through lipid and diffusion through protein so basically those substances which are lipid soluble substance they are fat soluble substance they diffuse out through lipid bilayer before studying this one we need to understand the anatomy of plasma membrane you must have uh, studied that plasma membrane is made up of bilayer of lipid and protein right look this is the bilayer means two layer of lipid right and this is the lipid molecule in lipid molecule i have tried to show that the upper part is head this head is hydrophilic part means water loving part right it make the bond with the water this tail part is hydrophobic part right it is water repelling part right so lipid molecule is polar molecule one part which is hair head part that is hydrophilic and that another part which is tail part that is hydrophobic here in lipid bilayer all hydrophobic part remains at the center and hydrophilic part remains outside right transport of lipid soluble substances takes place through these lipid bilayer only lipid soluble substances they can they can transport it from uh, uh, through the plasma membrane by the lipid bilayer so hydrophobic substances or fat soluble substances can transport it through lipid bilayer easily but those substances which are hydrophilic water soluble or water itself right or water soluble substances they cannot pass through the lipid bilayer right they cannot cross through the lipid bilayer then how they will be transported across the plasma membrane they will be transported through these intrinsic protein they are called channel protein right so channel protein allow the transport of hydrophilic substances or water soluble substances through the through themselves they may be simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion right these proteins you can see that they are i have colored them with the green color 
they are called channel protein channel protein can be of two type water channel or ion channel water channel are called aquaporin the question which has been asked in medical examination how many type of the aquaporin are the found this is given in your ncert but this question has been asked twice or four times right there are eight different kind of the aquaporins which are found aquaporins are what they are a type of protein channel through which water soluble substances can pass through them right and there are eight different kind of the aquaporin have been reported in the membrane right there are certain channel through which means certain protein channel through which ion can pass through they are called ion channel right is that clear diffusion through protein and diffusion through lipid ask me if you have any doubt uh oh uh, yeah fine ion protein okay fine look there this is the same protein channel right if these channel allow the passage of water soluble substances or water itself we call them aquaporin and suppose that if they allow the passage of ions through them we call them ion channels right like you must have listened the sodium potassium pump ionic channels are also known as the pump we also call them pump we also call pump pump term is used for ion channel right clear okay one more thing channel protein uh they allow the passage of substance by two means right try to understand first simple both are the passive process both are the process passive in both process energy is not required right simple diffusion and simply the substance like sodium pump so sodium ions are simply passing through this channel right protein channel another one is facilitated diffusion so here you can see in simple diffusion there is this channel protein right this is just channel protein so through channel protein they are passing but in facilitated diffusion it is also a passive process there is a special kind of the protein this red color protein this is called red, i have represented with the red color it is not or not of red color so we call it carrier protein carrier protein receive substance from one end and drop at the another end this is called carrier got it so facilitated diffusion takes place through the carrier protein in simple diffusion carrier protein is not is that clear it is important great again the same thing i have tried to show look passive transport passive transport when it takes place through the lipid bilayer it is diffusion process now the passive transport can be simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion in facilitated diffusion the carrier protein is required in active transport active transport what happen energy is required energy changes the shape of the this, this protein and uh, through them substances are passed through right again this is important it has been asked right and i have tried to show the example with the help of example and i have dimension those example which have been asked multiple time twice this question have been asked i'll tell you this question look so i told you that channel protein are those protein they are also called pump Ion, uh, ionic channel or ion pump through which uh, the substances are or ions are transported. Uh, the channel protein which help in the transport of the mineral or ions they can be of two types: uniport and symport. Uniport are those channel protein through which, at one time, only one type of ions can transport it. If sodium need to transport, the only sodium will be transported one. to them if hydrogen need to transport it the only hydrogen will be transported so uniport allow the transport of only one kind of the substance the example can be sodium pump or hydrogen pump sodium and hydrogen pump are the example of uniport right sodium pump are found in our uh, rbc 
hydrogen pump are found in our uh, the membrane of lysosome right now symport in symport at one time two substances will be transported simultaneously two ions will be transported simultaneously they may be in same direction or they may be in opposite direction if both are transported in same direction at one go they are called symport if both are transported in opposite direction they are called antiport so co transport can be of two type symport and antiport this question have been asked multiple time in neat exam fructose sugar is transported along with the sodium in our digestive system small intestine so in a small intestine try to understand in a small intestine there are symport these symport transport sodium and fructose simultaneously right so uh, the question was that how the question have been asked in medical examination the which of the following are symport fructose sodium sucrose chloride glucose sodium glucose potassium that that's how it is asked so fructose and sodium pump are a type of symport antiport antiport are found in our rbc right in rbc red blood capsules when they carry the oxygen chloride if chloride will come inside the bicarbonate ion will go outside so that is example of antiport right again sodium potassium pump they are found in our neuron they are a type of antiport right so sodium sodium uh, sodium potassium pump in neuron they are type of Did you got for can symport and antiport? Is that clear? You have to remember the example as well, because the question has been asked in medical examination from the example. This uh, sucrose and this one, sucrose, fructose and sodium uh, pump. Uh, this question has been asked many times, and even sodium potassium pump. This question, antiport, and what are the symport? That kind of the question. so i think furkan uh, you must be clear with the permeability uh, uh, impermeable permeable semi permeable selective permeable or differentially permeable types of the permeability i think you must be clear with this concept sodium potassium are uh, actually antiport you know uh, that's why i have uh, showed uh, the different direction uh, in uh, you must have gone through with that uh, uh, transmission of nerve impulse so neurons uh, if two sodium ion will come inside three potassium ion will uh, sorry if two potassium ion will come inside two sodium ion will go outside if three sodium ion will come inside two potassium ion will go outside so both are in different direction so they are a type of antiport right sodium potassium pump they are antiport now come to the osmosis a bit confusing phenomena but okay look uh i have two tumbler okay differentially permeable right i'll explain first the meaning of differentially permeable look selectively permeable or differentially permeable membrane are those like nucleus they will allow the passes of only certain kind of the substance right they do not follow the mechanism of higher concentration or lower concentration 
they allow only the passage of certain type of the substances when it is needed. This is called selectively permeable membrane. For example, uh, nuclear membrane allow the passage of uh, mRNA from inside to outside when it is required, when protein synthesis is needed, because that is a selectively permeable, right? So selectively permeable allow only selective or exclusive kind of the substances when it is required, right? In semi-permeable, the size matter, right? Size matter, the concentration matter, but in selectively permeable, size and uh, concentration do not matter. They have the special type of the channel protein and those are special channel protein will open only when the particular substance is required. Got it? That is the difference. So uh, we can say cell wall is permeable, plasma membrane is semi-permeable, and nuclear membrane, mitochondrial membrane is selectively permeable. Look, uh, one more example. Inner membrane of mitochondria is differentially or selectively permeable. It allows only the entry of pyruvate. Only pyruvate can enter. Other forms of sugar cannot enter inside the inner membrane of mitochondria. So that is the best example of uh, selectively permeable, differentially permeable membrane. Now come to the osmosis. Look, uh, it's a basic concept, but let me revise you so that. Uh, there I have taken two tumblers. Uh, there is a 1000 ml water at both of the tumblers. Here I have added 15 gram salt. There means the solution have low concentration. Here I have added 100 milligram salt. So, sorry, 100 gram salt. So, the solution is, uh, this is high concentration. So, higher concentrated solutions are called hypertonic and low concentrated solutions are called hypotonic. When we will connect these through any channel or through any pipe, what will happen? Salt will start moving from hypertonic solution to hypotonic solution, right? Means from its higher concentration to lower concentration. And water will start moving from the hypotonic to hypertonic solution, right? This phenomena will keep on going until the concentration at both of the points become equal. Right? And that is called equilibrium situation. So this phenomena will keep on going with the equilibrium situation. Suppose that, suppose that we divide or separate these two tumblers with the help of semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable membrane do not allow the passage of these minerals or salt it will allow only the passage of water, right? So, in simple diffusion, there is a no barrier. In, uh, in uh, osmosis, there is a barrier called semi-permeable membrane. Now, try to understand here. Here, there is a pure water. So, this is hypotonic solution, tumbler number one. Tumbler number second, there is a sucrose is uh, added here. Uh, so the concentration is higher. So it's a hypertonic solution. But the only thing which can, uh, but these both are chamber are separated with the help of differentially permeable membrane or semi permeable membrane. Right. This membrane will allow only the passage of water. Do not allow the passage of salt molecule. So now what will happen? The water molecule will start moving from hypotonic solution to the hypertonic solution. So how we can uh, explain? We can explain in three ways. The movement of water from its higher concentration to lower concentration of water is called osmosis. Movement of water from hypotonic solution to hypertonic solution through semi-permeable membrane is called osmosis. <coughs> movement of water from low concentrated solution to higher concentrated solution is called osmosis. So we can define the osmosis in these three different categories. Wait, all the definitions are same. 
क्लियर तो दिस वॉज सिंपल ऑस्मोसिस नाउ डीपी डिफ्यूजन प्रेशर एंड डीपी डी दैट इज कॉल्ड सक्सन प्रेशर डिफ्यूजन प्रेशर डेप्सिट दैट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज द डिफ्यूजन प्रेशर the diffusion pressure is a type of energy which is present in molecule water molecule are in pure state here so they will have more energy right hypotonic solution water molecules are free so they will have more energy and here the water molecule are not free they are mixed with the solute so they will have low energy so those water molecule which have higher energy they will put a pressure on the membrane or they will put pressure from hypo to hyper this is called diffusion pressure so we can say the hypotonic solution where the water molecule are in more concentration they have high diffusion pressure and they start from high diffusion pressure towards the lower diffusion did you got the concept of diffusion pressure great great now it's easy for me to make you understand look so here diffusion pressure is high here so we can say high dp so suppose that here diffusion pressure is 10 mm hg and here diffusion pressure is 4 mm hg now when the osmosis will take place osmosis will take place till the diffusion pressure become equal at the both side right so at the equilibrium state the diffusion pressure should be 7 at the both of them right but what is the current situation there is a higher diffusion pressure plus 3 is higher here and minus 3 is higher here right so to reach its 7 it need more 3 3 mmhg more diffusion pressure right that is deficient here right that is deficient here where in the b tumbler the tumbler number 2 how much diffusion pressure is deficient means less that is the 3 mmhg so i will say the dpd is 3 mm hd diffusion pressure deficit is 3 mm hd if this 3 mm hg will be transferred when the water molecule will move here this 3 mm hg will be fulfilled this 4 will reach to the 7 and dpd will become 0 did you got this point pressure exerted by hypotonic water molecule on the membrane to that right the pressure exerted by the water molecule on the membrane you can define you can think like this way the pressure exerted by the water molecule on the membrane is diffusion pressure and deficit means which is deficient got it is that clear then only if if it's clear then if this this concept clear then only i will move ahead very good if you got it it's it now from this diagram you will see if you, when you will solve the previous year question uh, you will see that question have been asked from the dpd as well the question have been asked from this this diagram as well even uh, i have seen in the previous year question paper uh, uh, the question directly came from this diagram they have given this diagram and then they have asked the question right So look, when water molecule will start moving from outside to inside cell. So this is the vacuole, this green color, that is vacuolar sap. Vacuole inside the liquid, whatever the liquid is filled in vacuole, that is called vacuolar sap. So when water will start moving from outside to inside the vacuole. So this, uh, so the pressure they will drop, the pressure which they will drop. that will call osmotic pressure right osmotic pressure so diffusion pressure or osmotic pressure is the same right so osmotic pressure the direction of osmotic pressure will be from outside to inside now the water will come inside and cell will swell the swell condition of the cell is called turgid 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 cell turgid cell right now what will happen due to swelling this 
this this uh, this uh, vacuolar sap will impart pressure on the cell wall from inside to outside that is called turgor pressure try to understand osmotic pressure will put pressure inside op right and uh, then what will happen then when the water will come inside what will happen the cell will become turgid or swell now the vacuole will put pressure on the cell wall outside this is called turgor pressure and against this turgor pressure cell wall try to put the pressure inside this is called wall pressure and wall pressure will be always be equal to turgor clear wall pressure will always be equal to turgor pressure there is a formula of dpd diffusion pressure deficit dpd diffusion pressure deficit so diffusion pressure is osmotic pressure minus wall pressure we can say as the wall pressure and tp are equal so we can say osmotic pressure minus tp so that is the formula to measure the tp dpd we have already understood what is the dpd from this screen the question have been asked many times sometime with the help of diagram sometime with the help of this formula dpd formula clear clear for fun this concept dpd turgor pressure wall pressure osmotic pressure so that diffusion pressure is osmotic pressure right during the process of osmosis the molecule that impart the pressure on the membrane that is called osmotic right now the water potential try to understand it's easy if you will uh, it will like this one uh the potential term is represented by this uh, symbol that is called psi this one psi symbol. so psi symbol represent the potential and we say psi w means water potential right the uh, water what is the water potential water potential is the free energy that is present with the water molecule the pure water have maximum free energy right try to understand the pure what is the water potential right so water potential is let me write it down water potential water potential is the free kinetic energy free kinetic energy present in water molecule it is represented by the psi w right and this is maximum in in pure water so pure water molecule have maximum kinetic energy means they have the maximum water potential right and the water potential of pure water is zero right so whenever you will mix solute right whenever you will mix solute so suppose that there is a pure water which have water potential zero you have mixed solute molecule when solute molecule you will mix then what will happen look the solute molecule will collide with the water molecule so that the kinetic energy of water molecule will reduce right and we represent this energy as the solute potential the amount of energy which is reduced by the addition of solute particle is called solute potential we represent it psi f right this psi p is pressure potential right so there is a formula 
what is the psi p pressure potential the amount of the pressure or the value of pressure become lower or higher right increases or decreases due to addition of these solute molecules or removal of these solute molecules that is called pressure potential and the formula is water potential is equal to solute potential plus pressure potential then did you got solute potential pressure potential and water potential uh, you know this this concept is like we are studying the uh, uh, no matter what is the solute uh, uh, what the solute is it always be uh, no 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 this is just example solute potential always been negative you can conclude that it will always be negative i have just put the example of minus 2 it can be minus 2 right solute potential if you will keep on adding the solute it will become more minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 it will become more minus right more negative right if you will decrease it will become more positive means it will it will never become positive it will try like uh, if you will keep on uh, ex extracting the solute suppose that the solute potential is minus 4 you have extracted some sugar or some solute it will become minus 3 more sugar extracted minus 2 more sugar if you will extracted all sugar from it it will become zero but it can never be positive so solute potential can never be positive water potential can never be positive is that clear? Again, I have represented the same thing here. Try to understand. The water molecule, uh, water molecule have the maximum free energy here, pure water molecule. Maximum free energy means maximum chemical energy. Water potential, psi w. Pure water have psi w zero. Here we have mixed the glucose. That is the addition of the solute. For say example. Uh, psi s is minus 2 then chemical energy will decrease water potential will become negative more negative right so water potential will become minus 2 now what will happen from minus 2 water potential suppose that here minus 2 water potential here suppose that minus 3 water potential then what will happen the water molecule will start moving from its less negative to more negative right from minus 2 to minus 3 and what is the solute potential here? Minus 1. Let's say this is the formula. Water potential is equal to solute potential plus pressure, pressure potential. Psi P is pressure potential. Psi S is solute potential. Psi W is water. Right. So, always it will move diffusion or, or osmosis will always take place from less water uh, potential to sorry, from more water potential to less water potential means from more free energy to less free energy great so you know this is the osmosis energy uh, previously in previous slide whatever we were studying this osmosis this osmosis had been explained with a like uh, with a point of view of chemistry and this osmosis have been explained both are the osmosis this osmosis have been explained with the help of physics right so conceptually right both have been explained in our ncrt in brief right uh, this is the plasmolysis the question have been asked multiple times is the plasmolysis what is the plasmolysis when water start when we put a cell in hypertonic solution and water start coming out from the vacuole this is called plasmolysis right so when we keep a cell normal cell uh, in a hypertonic solution water will start coming from the vacuole right so and the cell will become flaccid right water will come out of the cell we will call this flaccid this is the first stage of the plasmolysis so what is the plasmolysis when we keep any cell in higher concentration water start coming out of this cell we call this plasmolysis so first state is flaccid cell state and this plasmolysis this plasmolysis this first stage when cell will become flaccid means it will shrink this is called limiting plasmolysis then we will keep cell in more hypertonic solution what will happen this protoplasm or plasma membrane will start protoplasm and plasma membrane will start uh, pulling back 
or shrinking the uh, uh, protoplasm from the corner and uh, it will pull itself from the corner and in this corner hypertonic solution will be filled this situation is called incipient plasmolysis when protoplasm is pulled back from the corner further keeping the cell in more hypertonic solution what will happen the protoplasm will pull back pull back itself from the all corner or pa all part of the cell wall except few places this is called evident plasmolysis in the final plasmolysis the protoplasm will leave the cell wall and the space will be filled with the hypertonic solution this situation is called final plasmolysis so plasmolysis can be defined in three st uh, four stages limiting plasmolysis incipient plasmolysis evident plasmolysis and final plasmolysis right if final plasmolysis cell kept immediate in the water it will regain its shape it will regain its state otherwise it will die tell me furkan is it clear the stages of plasmolysis are important Uh, pulled inside, not not pushed out. Pulled inside, right? It will be pulled back from the cell wall. It will pull back itself from the cell wall. All the contact of cell wall from the cell wall will be removed, and the central vacuole will become shrink. It will become very small. Okay. So that is the wilting of the plant during the summer time. that is just plasmolysis process of plasmolysis that is all right in the day time nowadays summers are there uh, temperature is very high you will see that uh, many of this small uh, uh, small plant they just drop down their head because of the plasmolysis at the evening time when you give them water they will become again refresh that will again the cells will get deplasmolized right so that's it for the today furkan so did you got all those concept is it easy for you to understand or is still difficult Uh, so uh, one more important thing is that legible whatever written on the ppt first thing and second thing uh, is this is is this pace is okay the pace we are taking i have maintained the pace because uh, i have in the mind that you have uh, studied all this concept and uh, you have passed the 12th class so is that